And welcome back. This is the second half of your newspaper review. You're most definitely on K24 television. Don't forget, uh, speaking of papers, you can get yourself a copy of your people daily. It's only 10 shillings and you get that straight to your phone. Uh, the number that you need to dial is star 550 star 4 hash. Once again, the number is star 550 star 4 hash. You don't need any data for that. You don't need a mobile app for that paper. All you need is that number that I'm giving you. Star 550 star 4 hash. Dial that number. Get yourself a copy of your people daily straight to your phone. Only costs you 10 shillings a day and you can get this right across the country and it's brought to you by uh, Safaricom and the People Daily. Still talking about um, the allocation of revenue across the counties and how this will play out uh, later on today on the floor of the House. Now the Commission on Revenue Allocation says that the 2019 census data has contributed to huge differences in county revenues allocation that has seen the deadlock on agreement on the formula in the sharing of the 316.5 billion shillings allocated to counties by the national government. Now the impasse has now seen CRF forced to offer a helping hand in a bid to end the stalemate. Martin Opio had this story. For months now, members of the Senate have been involved in heated arguments over the right formula of sharing resources across counties leading to an impasse that is now threatening to shake and tank political alliances. In a bid to solve the situation, the Commission on Revenue Allocation has stepped in with its own advice. The Commission remains available to provide any technical input to the ongoing negotiations in the Senate. The Commission says the formulation of the third revenue allocation was informed on the basis of enhancing delivery of service as well as encouraging balanced development. The CRA recommendation on the third basis adopted a new framework that brings revenue sharing to functions assigned to county governments provided in Schedule 4 of the Constitution. And this framework uses the most recent data available. As per the CRA recommendation, Nairobi was to be the biggest gainer with a total of 17.5 billion shillings of the allocated 316.5 billion shillings. Lamu was to get the lowest chunk of the allocation at 2.81 billion shillings. The Commission affirms that the recommendations have since been affected by time factors with 2019 population census coming into play and thus widening the difference in allocation. We note that the equitable share allocation to county governments for the fiscal year 2020-21 remained at the same level as that of the financial year 2019-20. That is 316.5 billion. This particular factor makes cushioning the losing counties impractical. For now, all eyes will be on the Senate as it tries to make another attempt to break the impulse. Martin Opio, K24. As you can hear, a helping hand being given right there. And of course, a bit of respite even as um, this particular issue gets, uh, gets back on the floor of the Senate. Uh, Justice, let me come to you because as we talk about all of these factors in terms of how we should uh, come up with a formula, what needs to be put in, in the, this particular formula to make sure it's more equitable, let's not forget the political realities of the day and probably those way more uh, than all they're talking about in terms of land or population. Front page of the Standard, uh, David Morada talking about the fact that they are not yet done. Uh, we will deal with senators for going against the party position. They will have themselves to blame for their parochial decisions. We will kick them out of the party. Is this the input into the formula that you're really not talking about? It's not land, it's not population, it's not poverty, it's the politics, and that's not what you're addressing in this particular issue. Well, I think that it is contradiction because reading the, the headline, uh, the standard headline today, I would imagine it is uh, Murade's position, which is more parochial in my opinion, because uh, it is the same exceptionalist politics that we are trying to you know, to practice in this country. And that, and that, that Senate has been turned into, you know, a, a delicate conference of unthinking delegates with instructions from their party leaders. And remember the other time I had said in this country, the tragedy and, and the challenge we are facing is that our party leadership gradually and slowly but steadily, we are turning our uh, party leaders into spiritual uh, grand ayatollahs <laughs> of their of the institutions, that the word of a party leader is the gospel, that if you digress, though, you know, then you should be punished immediately. And by the way, 
you have had and you have seen a lot of meetings where you know instructions are given from the party leadership, be it wiper or the um, Jubilee, and, and 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 what we hear is that the party leader has said we have never seen a, a conference or a delegate conference or, or officials of the party being summoned to discuss this matter. You always hear people over the weekend and say this this particular party leader received particular politicians, and the instructions are very clear that you support or you oppose. So in my opinion, if we were talking about parochial uh, politics, I would imagine those who are pushing vehemently without regard to uh, the, the marginalized areas for the soul for more than 60 years, that the, the and, and, and by the way, Chef, you, you need to understand that um, when we are talking about service delivery in, in a county like Marsabit, uh, a county like uh, Tana River, how, how, how much would you need for every individual to offer service. For example, if you are providing health service to an individual in Tana River, how much do you need per head to offer that service? How much per head do you need to offer um, education in Tana River? How much per head do you need if you were to have uh, infrastructure, road networking? I mean, it would be almost, as I said before, 40 times. So it is so much expensive. And by the way, there are, there are counties that have named some of their uh, local hospitals, uh, referral hospital for for political expediency. But in the real sense, most of these counties that have turned some of these local hospitals and named them uh, referral hospitals, in practical sense and in medical terms, they are not referral hospitals. They are, they, they, they are playing politics. They want to, you know, encourage and and, 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 and and play politics with the naming of those. Most of the hospitals that we call the referral hospitals are in the areas that I said have benefited from the independence from 1963. So, and in some of the counties, again, I, I saw university for the last, for the first time in 2013, 2014. And some of these universities, again, are just merely satellite universities. So, I mean, to be honest, I think we, 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 we want to ask some of our party leaders to, to go slow. And, and I think the, the senators uh, must uh, practice and uh, must exercise their independence. Like my sister did rightly say, it cannot be turned into a delicate conference receiving instruction from the party leaders. <laughs> uh, I hear on that, Justice. Let me come back to the studio because um, every single time a senator talks or a different politician talks on this particular issue, they'll front the issues of marginalized counties, you know, court session all paper number 10, and all of this. But on the back of that, you can see the political theme playing out over and over and over again at this point, and you're seeing it more so on the floor of the House. There's been talk of some senators uh, taking their position because they want to be governors in 2022. That has been put on the cards. Or different alliances being formed now as and the political ground shifts uh, for some of these politicians. And now we've heard some of them might be partyless if they don't toe the party line, uh, Arnold. How do you deal with that? Because really, even as you talk about the inputs that you need to change, it's a different issue. Uh, it's a matter of life and death politically for some of these uh, senators, so to speak. Well, it's important to state that... Uh uh, the revenue allocation formula and discussion is actually a political process and therefore we cannot actually expect to go through this process without politics. It's a political process and uh, what is happening pre precisely is what we need to see going on. The only problem is that the kind of politics individuals like Muradi are doing is not the kind of politics you would need in such like a discussion. So in my opinion, if anybody in Jubilee is actually listening is that uh, Muradi should be actually locked up until this conversation is over. He needs How to be do found, put into a cupboard somewhere and kept away. Mother is that bad kid. You don't want roaming around and outside when visitors come calling. So for, for the kind of conversations we have at the moment, Marada should be locked away. As in, we are talking about f the politics of figures, the numbers and everything else, even as we go out and talk about it. But he's just out there to threaten and show us uh, you know, what uh, at uh, the local level when we were young we would call uh, the politics of thorax. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just out that you either do this or this. So um, somebody somewhere needs to lock up Morade until this particular war is over, and then we will open it up. We love him when other things are there. But for this particular conversation, he should not be there. I've heard just us talk about how we brand and phrase things. And he's, talking, he's talked about uh, hospitals, for example, that are, uh, are called level four, and they're not there. I'll give you an, a good example. In my village, for example, uh, there's a, a hospital called Matumbu level four. But at no particular time will you go there and find th more than three nurses. It's a level four hospital by name and branding and everything else. But when you need a nurse, 
you will be lucky to find more than three active nurses on duty at, at any particular time. And that goes to political branding, or rather the place of branding and framing in political communication. All of us are having a conversation and we already have been tied to some, the parameters of the conversations are already marked, even though they should be wider. Like I already mentioned that we should be talking about the larger national cake. It doesn't stop with the 316 billion shillings. Same thing with these conversations here, that if people are part and parcel of a political party, and by the way, we give political parties power, uh, knowing too well that we wanted them to further democracy and work out well. Guys are being limited, that Sakaja is expected to speak within certain confines. So, uh, does it mean that the Senate, as a constitutional organ, you know, Jubilee, as a political party, is not, does not have the same power with what the Senate, as a, uh, a component of parliament, should be? But then somehow that the Senate should actually put away its brain. You know, like uh, the whole joke about if you want to join a political party, you put your brain outside as you get, as you sign in. You know, like the way we sign mm -hmm. in coming in here. And you say, I uh, keep my brain as I get to the set. I'll actually pick it as I go outside. Right. That is not the kind of politics we need going forward. And this phrasing and framing uh, is a level of our, or rather speaks to our level of political understanding and we being active citizens. I'll give you a little bit of a controversial uh, example. See, in this country, uh, there's an individual who has been framed to look like he's the father, he's the pope of corruption. Right. No, even when he has been outside, there is still theft going on. We are talking about Mafia House, for example. Yet, that is not corruption sufficient to be spoken about. It's the same thing with the conversations we are having okay. around this thing. Okay. Let me get, um, we have a graphic up in terms of some of the gainers in terms of uh, the counties right there. Let me have that up on screen. Um, there you have it. The biggest gainers, so to speak, uh, if there was such a term, uh, Kiambu uh, right there at 1.3 uh, billion Kenya shillings. Uh, Nairobi, 1.2 billion shillings. Uh, Wasingishu, 983 million Kenya shillings. Uh, Nandi County, 700 million shillings. And you look at the respective uh, populations as well, with Kiambu standing at 2.4 million, uh, as you can see right there. Uh, we have Kajiado, 700 million Kenya shillings. Nakuru, 700 million shillings as well. And Laikipia and Transoya coming in at 600 million shillings uh, apiece. Um, these uh, look at the gain, that's a look at some of the gainers right now. And the big question is, even on the floor of the house, the debate is taking a different form because you'll see Senator Sakaja in Nairobi talking about the fact that it's not only about my county. I want it to have a more realistic approach and uh, all in and all win on this particular one. But if the party has anything to do with this, and it's not only an idle threat from um, uh, David Morave, even as Arnold puts it, because we did hear the chief whip of the party, who's also on the floor of the House, Senator Kangata, talking about the fact that there'll be action uh, taken against some of these senators. So how do you balance uh, what is right for your county and the country and your party position? Who, who takes precedence on that? Uh, you know, party positions are arrived at after a process. And it would be, you would imagine that the process would include the legislators to arrive at a party position. In uh, the instance that we see right now, I don't know if there's been any, maybe there has been an old Ken Chanuami, if there's been any process that the legislators actually undertook with party leadership to arrive at a certain position. And then now you find the legislators are refusing to adhere to that position. But there's something that uh, Arnold said, and uh, Justice also pointed out, that in the conversation about the 316 billion, we lose sight of the rest of the, uh, of the budget that is spent mm -hmm. in this country. And when you look at, for, a, for instance, how the rest of it is applied, are we applying the principles that we find in the Constitution in Chapter 12 that talk about public finance? The point that, that Justice made has refused to leave my head. How in places, for example, like Nairobi, you have Kura working on the roads, the Kenya Urban Roads um, Board, mm -hmm. that work on roads even in the estates. Some of these places cannot qualify for Kura funds because they are not urban areas. Mm -hmm. So even if, uh, for example, under the allocation of roads in the revenue allocation formula, Nairobi gets less for roads, that's fine because we have other sources where we can get money to develop our roads. But other areas do not have. And that is why when you look at a, country for, a county, for example, like Transnzoia, we had in the last um, uh, the year ending that they collected a lot less revenue than some of the other counties that uh, we are talking about. And yet they're standing to gain. 
Transnzoia is the home of the most fertile land that we have in this country with a lot of commercial farming. Why is revenue not being collected enough to bridge that gap? So we need to come to a place where the gainers and losers conversation is put aside. But let's look at the big kick. And I agree with something Arnold said. When you're having this conversation, strong arm tactics and politics is the last thing that you need to put on the table. Why? You're talking about people's lives. You're talking about people's livelihoods. Talk about it in a humane, nuanced manner. As a Kenyan, when I listen to some of the things that come out of uh, Vice Chair Murada's mouth, it's almost as if I do not exist. All that matters is what the political class wants. And as a Kenyan, I'm hoping that the people who have got, I have elected to go into the Senate, to go into the National Assembly, or to ascend to State House, have me in mind. I may not be the only factor, but could I at least count for something? Right. And if that is the conversation, then I agree with Arnold. Bind and gag the bird. Uh, if you've seen Asterix, when mm -hmm. you want to do something, cacophonics had to be bound and gagged and put aside <laughs> so it doesn't spoil the mood of what is going on around the table. <laughs> Maybe there are some conversations where you don't need... And I think that's, that was the wisdom in having such a conversation, only including the elected senators and not the nominated ones. You can imagine if the nominated senators were weighing in on this. It right. would have been so easy to tell them, you know what, you're going to lose your seats. This is the way walking in it. And the conversation that been lost. I think this is one time and I'm looking at the framers of the constitution saying, you know what, thank you for having the foresight to give such a conversation only to the elected senators so that they have to balance the party versus the people versus their own conscience because right. when they are done at the end of the day they have to go to bed at night and wonder was this a good day at the office okay. and I hope they can say that of themselves when they go to bed tonight. By the way, Jeff, if the nominated senators were voting Substantively, uh, if we didn't have over. the delegate system, mm -hmm. I can tell you this will actually be over, and it will mm -hmm. not matter what the rest what? of you think about. It should have been like the, the removals <laughs> that <we> so <saw> earlier. <laughs> okay, we have four minutes to go before we end up this show. I want some panting shots coming in, and even as we do that, I'll start with justice. Um, I also want you to probably address very quickly, even as you do that, because of uh, the four minutes we have, what we are seeing in play right now in terms of us being in this particular time. COVID still there with us. Uh, we spoke about um, some of the cartels that probably got away with some of the testing kits at the airport. Nothing much has been done in that regard. Even as you see from dailies, some of the companies that walked away brazenly with these tenders, we're talking about a company that's a month old getting a tender for one billion Kenya shillings. And yet, we still don't get to the bottom of this. Um, as we conclude, Justice, what's your take on how we're going to actually fight corruption, which is uh, the biggest expense of our, our budget as a country right now? Thank you. I think... Uh, one, I want to make a comment on, uh, on, on, on the instruction rather to uh, uh, Senator from Jubilee and, and, and questioned whether Murada has become the supreme uh, senator to give the rest of the senators instructions. And, and when people talk about the party position, we, we do not have in this country something, uh, something called the party position. The, the position of, 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 of people masquerading and, uh, and then presenting position as to believe, uh, you know, to believe position is actually the oligarchs, you know, the mandarins, the businessmen within to believe. The position of those senators in, um, in, in, in Odia, for example, would be the oligarchs, the, 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 the big time businessmen in, 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 um, in Odia. Because our institutions have been turned into policy makers for the big men of this country. I mean, basically, it is the the, the big men, the big business uh, men sit at night, and then you know our so-called uh, chief whip, uh, whips for the party uh, uh, in, the, in the Senate and Parliament get instruction from some of these uh, fellows, the, the big-time businessmen. And ultimately, on issues to do with COVID-19, there is a time I talked about um, obsession with tendering during this. Uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, and, and, and I think if you, if you go to counties, it is the same menace. The, the governors and their friends are, you know, engaging in massive tendering, uh, tendering things like food, tendering for things like uh, sanitizers, charity. I mean, it is crazy, it is madness. We are obsessed with tendering, tendering. I mean, if, I think we need a, 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 a rally, a, a prayer rally in this country to, to exercise the demon of tendering. I mean, this looks like there is no, and that's why some of these Kenyans doubt like, is there a COVID? A company is formed in the morning, in the afternoon, it is winning 
a, 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 a tender work for Belgium. Don't we need uh, a senior uh, prayer session? Because some of these institutions look like um, it's been pocketed. And, and of course, if you see DCI, okay. you, people, most of the people believe he's doing, um, you know, selective uh, prosecution. And that is why we don't believe that some of these characters who formed a company in the morning and in the afternoon, they, they had won a tender, and in the evening, they were already invoicing uh, <laughs> to be paid. So if okay. that is not a tragedy, I don't know what a tragedy is. And I hear you on that, uh, Justice, coming back to the studio very quickly. Uh, Joy, what's your parting <laughs> shot uh, this morning? My parting shot will be away from all this conversation. In this time, our children have been at home, and we, have had, we had yesterday from the, the Association of Private Schools that quite a number of them are not opening in January. And I'm wondering if the Ministry of, of Education is doing anything towards planning for our children in January. So my call this morning would be to the, min, the CS of Ministry of Education as well as the players in the education sector. This is the time in the next four months to invest in intensive building of extra facilities in our public schools because there will be children who won't have private schools to go to because the private schools don't exist anymore. The teachers were redundant. This is the time to hire them. As the Ministry of Health is hiring nurses, hire the extra teachers because come January, your public schools have to handle double the capacity. And as for parents, it's also time to reassess our relationship with private schools. Uh, this is the season that we have seen the, the weaknesses in our public education sector. So. We have heard about these uh, shenanigans of the Nyumbakumi learning under trees. Manenos, kindly, Bonasies, elevate your thinking to professor level in terms of education. This is a time to start building extra classes, start building extra schools, equipping the public, health, uh, the public education system to absorb their children when they come back in January so that no child is left behind because their local private school is no longer operational. Okay. So start giving us solutions now, not in January. Okay. Uh, Arnold, very quickly, your parting shots uh, today. Well, my parting shots will actually come at Afia House, just around Afia House and then... Uh, COVID. Number one, we have not learned anything from NYS1 and NYS2. Uh, if you look at the reporting yesterday, you will realize that looting continues at Afia House and abetted. Uh, and Kagwe, for all he has actually been speaking about, you note that uh, he is not getting rid of cartels at Afia House. Actually, cartels are getting rid of critical voices at Afia House. And finally, it's important to mention this. There is a photo that came up yesterday. Uh, of uh, the former Prime Minister Raila Odinga, Atuoli, Murade, uh, PK, and Maoka Maore. Mm -hmm. Continuously, we actually thought it was an old photo until Atuoli tweeted and said it was a new photo, and uh, he was very grateful that after Raila's uh, uh, vacation at the coast, he chose his house as a first thing. I need mm -hmm. to say this that uh, we have seen a continued treating of COVID guidelines, especially by that group, very lightly. As if COVID only knows the people who go to church. And uh, COVID actually also like, respects, like for example, Maoka Maori is actually 57. But somehow, those guys were not following the guidelines. But they expect that COVID knows the, the barrier between 57 and 58. PK was the youngest in that particular group. There was no following of the set guidelines by the Ministry of Public Health. That group needs to look at the U.S. and see the people who have been uh, taking lightly the guidelines by health authorities and what has happened to them. Somebody needs to actually put away Raila from those shenanigans and those games. He actually owes us an, an apology because he cannot continue as a leader of a nation and a very revered leader of a nation. Going around uh, disregarding public health uh, guidelines and such, he is an asset to us. He is an asset to this country. We need him to be well. Either they take him away from Atoli or Raila actually gets somebody else to, to manage him. It, it's okay. getting tiring and we really do not want to see those games continuing. As in to post for photos and uh, have meetings, there was no mask, there was nothing. Standing together, there was no social distancing. For elders of a nation like those people and for people like PK, whom we have hope in, that was bad manners. And you leave it at that as far as that's concerned.
Uh, thank you so much for your feedback as well. Getting it in at I am Jeff Morton at K24 TV. Arnold Maleba, Joy Mdevo, and Justice uh, Minor coming in on Skype as well. Thank you so much for you know your analysis this morning. Thank you for having us. And of course, if you missed out on any of the stories, you can get this uh, online as well. And you can also get yourself a copy of your PD to your phone. It's only 10 shillings. The number that you need is star 550 star 4 hash. And it's brought to you by Safaricom and the People Daily. That's how we wrap up our newspaper review this morning. We are back on the other side of the break. As you get interactive, this is K24 this morning.